were trapped in the native quarter of Mozambique. Two dead men at your feet, the police closing in on you. And beside you, a sultry girl who offers you escape. Escape, produced and directed by William N. Robeson, and carefully contrived to free you from the four walls of today for a half hour of high adventure. Tonight we escape to Portuguese East Africa, to the fetid alleys and dangerous rooftops of Mozambique, in the highly incredible yet somehow thoroughly plausible adventure by Percival Gibbon, entitled The Second Class Passenger. That's me, Ronald A. Dawson, second class passenger. Oh, I could have afforded first class by pinching a little here and there, but nobody back at Rawson's department store in Cedar Rapids will ever know. The important thing is they're saying Ronald Dawson in drapery is taking a cruise around the world. And then there's really very little difference in the accommodations. And the second class passengers are every bit as interesting as the first class crowd. Take Miss Patterson, for instance. You'd look far to find a more charming, likable, altogether uh, desirable young lady. Just the life of the party. <laughs> We'd gotten to be quite good friends by the time our crew was put in at Mozambique. Although the competition was always stiff, I can tell you. There were times I wish those other two, Jones and Twitchell, had missed the boat somewhere along the line. Well, we've still a good couple of hours before we sail. Oh, about a ride in one of these native carriages, Miss Patterson. Oh, dear, do you think they'd be clean? Personally, I doubt it. Although I don't know as I should care too much now. That woozo made me so woozy. <laughs> <laughs> ah, great stuff, woozo. It would take a Greek to think up a drink like that. Or to drink it. <laughs> American gentlemen like to buy pictures? Uh, no, no. Very interesting pictures. Take a look. Oh. Uh, no, go away. You know, we might do the fort, though. The uh, guidebook says it's the main point of interest. Now, let's see. Uh, built by the Portuguese in 1600. Oh, dear, never mind the statistics. I dare say the fort would be as dreary as the rest of the place. Oh, yes. Mozambique's not at all like what you'd imagine uh, Mozambique to be like. No. <laughs> well, it's a one-horse town, all right. Main Street and a couple of alleys. Oh, and it's so dirty. You know you'd think they do something about it in this day and age. Uh, oh. I'd like to oh, buy fine knives. No. Filthy. no. Field no, point. No, Look, all fine work. He's Him belong to big Tanganyika chief. I said no. Oh, dear. Maybe someday one need fine sharp knife. Uh, no. Now get out. <laughs> What did I need a knife for? <laughs> to protect yourself from the savage natives, old man. Uh, all you'd have to do is call a policeman. He isn't doing anything else. You see him? Look at him out in the center of the street directing traffic like he was at the corner of State and Madison. Then the traffic consists of two donkeys and an ox cart. Yeah. Uh, it will be a relief to get back on board ship and have a nice hot bath. Oh. Yes, and real American food instead of that greasy fried octopus we had for lunch at that Greek place. Oh, my, weren't they awful? As part of the broadening experience of travel. Yes, yes, I <laughs> suppose so. Like that cute idol that I bought. I can't wait to show that to the girls at the bank. You know, oh dear, Mr. Dawson. Yes, Miss Patterson? Where's my idol? Uh, why, I, I, I thought Jones had it. Oh, or Twitchell. Well. Oh, not me, old man. Well, you insisted on carrying it for Miss Patterson, don't you remember? Oh, dear, I, I must have left it back at the Greek restaurant. I'm so sorry. Oh. Oh, I did so want that idol. Don't you think you could go back for it, Mr. Dawson? Well, yes, of course. I, but I, I wonder if I'll have time before the boat sails. Oh, I'm sure you will if you hurry. Certainly, old man. You've got more than an hour yet. You're sure? Oh, yes. The steward told me. Well, then I'll go at once. Oh, that's kind of you, my dear Mr. Dawson. Now, mind you, don't miss the boat. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll try not to. Uh -huh. Why, chances are I'll catch up with you before you've reached the landing stage. Fine, we'll wait for you till the very last minute. I could have throttled that supercilious Jones insisting I had time. I knew there was time, but I had no desire to run off after a heavy bronze curio and leave Jones and Twitchell alone with Miss Patterson. She was too nice a person, and, oh, they were such dreadful bores. Yes, and I suspected them of being phonies, too. But 
there was no helping it now, so I made my way back up the main street toward Lazarus' restaurant where we'd had our indigestible Greek lunch. Somehow, this main street of Mozambique looked different now in the quick African twilight. The little saloons and the sidewalks were filling with men of every nationality and color. Many of them wore knives thrust through the belts of their thin white suits. Knives that looked as sharp as the glances they threw at me. I, I must confess, I, I felt a little strange and unwanted. Then, lounging toward me in the crowd, I saw a large woman, clad in a sort of burnous, but her brown face unveiled. She had very wide lips, and they were painted scarlet. And from the corner of her mouth, she dangled a cigarette. Her eyes were heavily mascarated, and when she looked down at me, terror seized me. I was afraid she would speak to me. I didn't know what I should do or say, but she didn't. Instead, she laughed. And the way the loiterers responded, I was convinced that they were laughing with her at me. I must say I was relieved to reach the entrance of Lazarus' restaurant. Good evening, sir. A little dinner for the gentleman? Uh, no, no, thank you. Uh, as a matter of fact, I, I just lunched here today. Very good, excellent meal. Thank you, sir. I, um... I, I left a curio here, probably under the table. Have you found it? A curio? Yes, um, some sort of a brass god. It was wrapped in newspaper. Oh, yes. We got him right here for you. Oh, that's good. That's fine. I, I'm in a hurry to get back to the boat. Yes, you better hurry. Pretty soon she rain. Rain? Why, there's not a cloud in the sky. You see, every night she rain in Mozambique. Well, you ought to know, but I still doubt it. Oh, uh, here, buy yourself a cigar. Thank you, sir. Thank you. You hurry quick before she rain. Don't worry about me. I'm not made of sugar, you know. <laughs> In just the few moments I'd been inside the restaurant, night had fallen, that sudden nightfall of the tropics. I looked overhead and clearly saw the stars. Thinking what a bad weather forecast of the Greek was, I tucked Miss Patterson's silly bronze idol under my arm and started off for the waterfront. I hadn't gone 200 yards when a large, warm drop of rain splattered on the back of my neck, then two more on my hat. And before I could take cover under an arch, it was raining like like Iowa in April. It didn't look like it would let up soon, and I wondered if there might not be a shorter way to the waterfront than the long walk down the main street and then the long way to the left along the docks. Surely one of these alleys that turned off to the left would lead me directly to the harbor and the landing stage. So I left the protection of the archway and turned into the alley at my left. Four steps from the main street, and I, I was engulfed in darkness wading through filth and mud over my ankles. But I was certain that I was on the right track, so I walked on and ran straight into a blank wall. I turned to retrace my steps, but I could see no lights anywhere. I, I felt along the wall and, until it gave into another alley, followed it to another blank wall, and then into another one. And now I knew I was lost. And now it, it began to rain in earnest. It pelted, it stamped, it whipped, it stung, it clashed. In a moment, I was drenched to the skin. If it was dark before, it was now black as a tomb. I struggled onward because it was too terrible to stand still and feel myself being beaten to the earth by the sheer weight of the rain. I don't know how far I walked through those foul and fetid passageways, nor for how long, but at last... Feeling my way around a corner, I saw a slit of light, a horizontal flicker beckoning beneath the door, and I heard voices. I lifted the bronze idol and rapped on the door with it, and the voices stopped. What do you want? Uh, I, I've lost my way. I'm, I'm wet through, and I, I don't know where I am. Please let me in. <laughs> Please let me in. Of course you may come in. You aren't exactly who we expected, but come in. Come in. <laughs> I, I walked into a room that was unfurnished, save for a littered table and some chairs and, and a gaudy picture of the Virgin that hung on the wall. On each side of it was a sconce, 
in which a slovenly candle guttered. A woman was perched on the corner of the table, a heavy shawl over her head. Under it, the dark face propped in the fork of her hand glowed sullenly, and her bare white arm was, was like a menacing thing. In a chair near her, a grossly fat man was huddled, scowling heavily under thick, fair brows, while the other man, he who had opened the door, stood smiling. The woman laughed softly and pointed to the image dangling in my hand. What is that? I, I beg your pardon? That parcel you are carrying. Parcel? Oh, it, it, it's a curio, an idol of some sort. A friend of mine left it at the restaurant this afternoon. And you? You are a tourist from the cruise boat? Uh, yes, yes, that's right. How did you know? What are you doing here so late? And so wet. The boat sails soon. I know. I I was trying to take a shortcut to the landing stage. I, I got lost somehow. I came ashore with some friends from the second class. I, I left them to come back and fetch this idol, and uh, <laughs> here I am. Give the young man a chair, Egon. Oh, oh, thank you. Thank you very much. But I must go on as soon as the rain stops. If you can direct it me to... It will not I've... stop for a uh... while yet. You may as well wait here. Yes. We may be able to provide some entertainment for our second-class tourist. As soon as your friends arrive, my dear. Friends? The police are not my friends. You led them to us? Would you walk about with your knives forever while I take all the risks? Risks? <laughs> Seven months you have done what you willed, untouched. I bought you freedom for seven months with smiles and love. Now you take your turn. One uses a knife, one goes to prison. One month, three months, six months. Who knows? You could have talked with the prefect of police again. Again and again. And for what? Life is not spending money. One pays for living, my friend, with work. Sometimes with jail. I have paid. Now is your turn. You could have helped us once more. Only once more and we could have been out of the sewer and on the coast to Lorenzo Marx or Cape Town. Why didn't you? Why didn't you help us once more? Yes, why? Always you say once more, once more. Now there is no more. You are a sheep pig, a defiled and debauched I beg your pardon, sir. What? That's no way to speak to a lady. What? <laughs> I, I'm serious. I don't like to hear such language used to a lady. I must ask you to apologize. What the devil have you got to do with this? You just came in out of the rain from the second class. Please, please, don't fight with him. There's trouble enough already. But what the devil right has he got to come in here Yesterday and tell me? Yesterday you stabbed the Egyptian. What of it? Don't stab this one. You want the police to find you here with the corpse? A corpse? What does it matter how the police find us? We wait for them because we have no choice. You put them on us. We should do away with you. Why do you lie? Even to yourself. Why must you hide your own blame behind my skirts? Great mother of heaven, you are neither man nor beast. You are just... Don't go on. Don't you dare say it. Uh, dare... You are just a Salmak. No one says that to me and Cliff. He's got a knife. Salmak! Salmak! I'll tell no, you, you don't! Here. Stand Here. back or I'll brain you with this idol. You'll do what? You'll think I carry only a knife. Pig! Dog! I waited for this! Uh. He forgot. I carry a knife. Oh. Oh. L look what I did to him with this bronze idol. Horrible. Horrible. It makes a good weapon, your idol. It was a grand blow. A king's blow. You cannot help him now. I... I I've killed a man with this little curio. And you've killed another with your knife. Two men murdered... Oh, I must get back to the ship. You must come with me. <laughs> to the ship? Oh, la la. You think I'd be welcome in the second class? Well, I, I don't know. But we... we must go somewhere. The police will be here any minute. The police? Yes. Come. 
He's not raining so hard now. Quiet. Here's the police. Oh. They have come for those two. They will be on both sides of us. Here, hold my hand. Yes. Stand perfectly still. I will tell you when it's safe to move. Now. They are all around us, so they won't hear us. Come, now. Where are we going? We are escaping. But if you know from what we are escaping, you would not care where. Hurry. Hang on to my hand. And hurry. They have found the bodies. Now they are after us. What will we do? There is a door nearby. We must find it. Or you feel. Feel along the wall. Here. Uh, Father. Uh, Father. Uh, it must be here. Yes, here it is. Push. Push it in. Uh, it won't budge. It's bolted from inside. You must push it in. It's the only way. Here. Uh, hold the side for me. I have it. Now. Uh, not yet. Hit it again. Uh. It's giving. Once more. Good. My friend, my great, strong friend. <laughs> Up these stairs now, quickly. Where are we going now? To the roof. Wait. Huh? The rain has stopped. Yes. The stars are coming out. There is your ship out in the harbor. I must get to it. Listen. You hear them? We are not safe yet. Over the wall to the next roof. Hurry. Now, over to the next parapet. Up you go. Are you all right? Come up quietly. Yes. What's that down there? Attend? Yes. People are asleep. You must walk like a rat. Wh who are they? Who knows? If they see us, they will think you have come after the women. Oh, but we could say... There would be nothing to say. Shh. Someone's crawling out of the tent. A man with a sheet wrapped around him. He's coming this way. Yes. Uh, why doesn't he see us? His eyes are clouded with sleep, perhaps. If he sees us? It will be too late. <laughs> then he won't. There. And there. Well, that took the fight out of him. Take this, my little knife. Just a prick, and he is quite safe. Oh, no, he's still enough now. He won't harm us. I, <laughs> I, uh, I really did him in, didn't I? It was splendid with only the bare hands to take an armed man. Armed? I didn't know he was armed. Of course. Of that you may always be sure. Look, there in his loincloth. A dagger. At least six inches. Yes. You are truly magnificent, my friend. You are a man. You are a woman. Then? Wonderful woman. I was wondering when you would kiss me. When you took offense at what the Russian said to me. I knew you would. But I wondered how soon... Yes, yes, I suppose I knew too, in a way. At least I thought how much I'd like to... But I wouldn't have had the courage before all this, I suppose. Courage? Your courage is of the lion. Your strength is of the great bull of Swahili. Uh, well, thank you, thank you. I, I wonder if we're far from the landing stage now. I, I mustn't miss my boat, you know. You want to go back to the second class? Well, naturally. That's what I was trying to do when I knocked on your door. Goodness, I've missed my dinner as it is. <laughs> missed your dinner? 
Yes, that is so. But haven't you gained something else? What? Me. Look. Look at me. Is it nothing, friend, that you have saved me for yourself? Uh, yeah, but... You conquer men as though you were bred on the roofs of Mozambique. You fight like a hero. A rush, a blow, a tumble, and you have them lying at your feet. Are you not glad that it was all for this, for me? <sighs> Kiss me. Uh, I'd, I'd fight. I, I'd fight for you as long as, as long as there was anyone to fight. You would. I know you would. You lead on. Where? Wherever you will. <laughs> Come. I, I don't expect you to believe this. Looking back, I'm still unsure it really happened to me. It's, it's as though I dreamed it. Well, I, I don't know how many roofs we crossed after that. A, a dozen, perhaps. Maybe 20. It was mad, I know, but I must have surrendered completely to the wild spirit of the African coast. I didn't seem to see the great ship lying out in the harbor, her, her lights blinking with the comforts of civilization. All my senses were focused on this slim, breathtaking figure leading me across the rooftops to a shadowy destination in which only one thing was certain. She would be there. I suppose in that moment, armed only with the bloody bronze idol, I was invincible. last, she led me down a creaking wooden stair that hung precariously on the sheer side of a house. And once more, we were in the mud of a gloomy alley. Even the way she slid her arm along mine and softly grasped my hand filled me with greater power than I had ever known. Hand in hand, we made our way down the alley and out into a little square where a night breeze rustled in the palms and smelled of the sea. And across the way, a, a dim light showed through a big open door. The little church of San Sebastian. Oh. The police. After all this? No, tenta escapar. Okay. E que você quer comigo? Eu tenho ordem de prendê-la. Por quê? Eu não fiz nada. Veremos. Me acompanhe agora. Vamos. Vamos, capitão. Devia haver outra maneira de resolver isto. Esta vez não pega mal. What's, what's the matter with him? What's he want? He says he won't let me go. <laughs> the devil he won't. What's he want you for? Oh, oh, my friend. This little policeman. They always arrest me when they get a chance. It is tiresome. Uh, listen, copper. Scram, see? Take it on the lamb. Take a powder. Callese, do contrario, será preso também. I said scram. Uh. Run. Run before he can get to his feet. No, not that way. Into the church. The sanctuary. My magnificent one. You fear no one. You fight for me. So long as there is anyone to fight. Yes. Now there will always be someone to fight. They will never leave us alone. Will they follow us in here? These police might do anything. But I know one door they will not dare follow us through. What is that? Come. This way. Here. This door. First, I must wrap my skirts close. Now. Come cleanly through the middle. Do not... Please do not rub the walls as you come. Hmm. 
There. We are safe for a while. They will not follow us through that door. Why not? It was the door of the lepers. The door of the... It is all right. We didn't touch the portals. See? Down the alley are the lights of the waterfront. Yes. Oh, where do we go now? Oh, we have a little time now to breathe the clean air of the harbor. And then I know a little place where <laughs> someone is coming. Step back in the shadow until they have passed. It certainly was something to write home about. Listen. What is it? I wonder what's happened to good old Dawson. Oh, drench. <laughs> the idol. I must return the idol. No, don't. My friend, this is the greatest danger of all. Goodbye. Don't go. Magnificent one. Don't go. I must. Goodbye. <laughs> Hello there. Oh, well, uh, Here's uh, Mr. Dawson. <laughs> uh, got here before you, it appears. Yes. Did you find the idol? Oh, yes, but uh, for a moment there, I was afraid I should miss the boat. Oh, uh -huh. I say, old man, you're a bit disheveled. Uh, yes, I got caught in the rain. <gasps> and my idol... Oh, Mr. Dawson, you've got it all dirty. Yes, it is a bit must. I well, dropped it once or twice, I fear. Well, I think that was clumsy of you. Oh, nothing. A little soap and water won't put to rights, I dare say. Well, maybe. Well, we'd better hurry along. I'd hate to have to spend any more time in this dreadful place. Oh, so should I. Yes. There, there. There's the whistle. Now, that's the last warning, no doubt. Well, come on. Come on, everybody. I'm not coming. Oh, Dawson, don't stand there mooning. We'll miss the boat. Uh, yes. Yes, and... Just a moment. Say, is there someone standing there in the shadow of the alley? I'm not sure. I thought for a moment... That's funny. I could have sworn I saw you wave goodbye to someone. Perhaps I did. Goodbye to Mozambique, to adventure and, and romance. Oh, that's good. That's very good. Adventure, romance, in this pest hole? <laughs> Twitchell, what would you say if I told you I had just killed a man, fled over the rooftops of the city, made love to a beautiful woman, fought the police, escaped through the leper's gate... Oh, great I... heavens, Dawson. I'd say you had the wildest imagination I'd ever heard of. Nothing like that ever happens to a second-class passenger. No. No, I suppose you're right. Nothing like that ever happens to a second-class passenger. Except in dreams. Uh, come on, Twitchell. We'll miss the boat. Escape. Produced and directed by William N. Robeson, has tonight brought you The Second Class Passenger by Percival Gibbon, adapted for radio by Mr. Robeson, with Harry Bartell as Dawson, Jeanette Nolan as The Woman, and Kathy Lewis as Miss Patterson. Original music conceived and conducted by Cy Fuhrer. Next week... You are isolated on a remote plantation in the crawling Amazon jungle, and an immense army of ravenous ants is closing in on you. Swarming in to eat you alive. A deadly black army from which there is no escape. Next week, we escape with Carl Stevenson's terrifying story, Leinengen versus the Ants. Good night, then, until this same time next week when again we offer you Escape. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>